Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to NanoSef, the series where I reveal to you, the viewer, the arcane secrets of harnessing Ceph, the Chromium Embedded Framework, which, you know, they, they, they're they not telling you. They don't want you to know. You know, some of the most successful applications in the history of computing are built on Ceph. They don't want you to know about it. In the last video, we uh, we talked about the, the multi-process architecture of Ceph. Uh, so we got this function here that handles the forking, all the child processes. But if we are not the child process, the, all the child processes block in here and there's an internal loop that just runs them. But if we're not the child, we're going to return negative one. So we're not going to return from this part. We're going to keep going down here. What do we do down here? Well, here's where we create the window where all the shit goes into. And we create the, the Ceph client that binds to the window and populates it with all of the content that we've been rendering. So, how are we going to do that? So before we actually create the, the window and bind the client to it, we have to initialize Ceph. This is, this is something that only the browser process does. It's the, it's the head honcho, it's the boss. We can also do some configuration, we have to, with an object called Ceph settings. And now, there's a lot of stuff you could do, but we're just going to do a couple simple ones. We're going to do the minimum that we require. So the first one is we have to set multi-threaded message loop equal to true. I think this is false by default. And the way that I'm showing you, which is like the simplest way I know of setting this up, it needs to be true. It just needs to be true. It needs to be that way. I mean, you can look it up. I mean, maybe it doesn't need to be true. It, it looks like, like if we set it to true, Ceph is going to run its own thread to do the message loop pumping. If we set it to false, then we have to do it manually. We have to call a function. I want to do that, man. Just set it to true. Let Ceph to handle it. I'm I can't be fucked. All right. Now we have to set, where's one thing? We got to set, because Chromium, Chromium, it likes to create a lot of files. It's like the caches and all the all the good stuff. And uh, it needs to know where to create that. You'd think uh, it would just default to, you know, if we didn't tell it, it would just default to where the exe is or the working directory and it'd be fine. No, it gets very angry. So we got to set a string. And the people who made Ceph in their infinite wisdom made it really weird to set a string on this thing. So like we, the setting that we got to set is called uh, cache path. That makes sense, right? And it is a, a Ceph string. So you think, okay, cache path is equal to, like maybe it would just, you know, convert from like, you know, this. No, that doesn't work. Ah, so it's got to be a Ceph string. So I got you. I got you. Ceph string this. No. Try again. Um, Jesus, I don't know, man. Ceph string from string? No, no, that's not how you do it. No, no, no. You call, you create a Ceph string and you pass it the Ceph string and then you create from string as a member function and then oh no but it's got to, you got to give it a pointer sorry sorry it's got to be a pointer to a set string and then you can call from string and then you can put the thing in there now that is stupid but whatever it is what it is now now what we got to do is we got to tell it where to put this thing and it has to be an absolute path which is even more annoying but, I mean, you know, we know C++, so it's not that annoying, right? Um, well, I know C++ anyways. I don't know about you jabronis. File system. All right, so I want to put it in the current path because I don't want to find a place for it. So, std file system current path. And we'll append to that ceph cache. And then it needs a string, so we will get string of that. We will pass that to the from string to pass it to the Ceph string, which is constructed with a pointer to a Ceph string. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's done. We can forget about it. Never think about that again. Lost too many brain cells on it already. Initialize. <clears throat> so now we call the initialize function. It takes in, again, the main args. It likes those args. It wants to know what's going on. What the dog doing? Settings. Also wants the P app. Very popular. And the sandbox, which again, we are not using. Okay, so we've initialized Ceph. All done. There's lots more. Like, I mean, you could you could do settings dot. Well, not there, but settings dot. And you can see there's a lot of 
stuff you could configurate. Okay, so now it's all initialized. What's next? We create the actual MFing window that all this stuff is going to go into. We own that window, uh, and it's nice. And then Ceph is going to put its content on there as a child window. We got to create the top level window. And this is just basic, you know, Windows API stuff. That's not what this video is about, but you know, I'll, I'll type it out for you in real time because I know you guys like that. You're kinky that way. Hwind, we call this one, uh, let's call this one the browser. Browser window. I don't know. No pointer. And we'll do a little scope so that stuff gets cleaned up. I don't know, just because I like to. So before we create a window, we need a window class. That's what this window class name is all about. So there it is. Um, what do we need? CB size is a good one. That's got to be the size of the thing. We need a style for it. I guess redraw is good. I don't know, man. I just copied this from like somewhere else. I don't even remember, but it's probably necessary. Very important. We need the pointer to the procedure that is going to handle messages posted to this window. I don't know. So I'm I always confused. Like I don't know whether to call this shit the client or the browser. But I guess they call it the browser process. So let's call it the browser window. So we need a browser window procedure. We need a window procedure to handle messages. And I'm sure you guys know the deal. Many, many of you know the deal. It's a it's a function, takes in some parameters, and then we got a big switch and we handle the messages. Sweet. And if there's any that we didn't handle, there's a default to handle to give you the default behavior. If you so desire. Now the one that we really need to handle here, well, we'll we'll deal with that later. Let's let's finish up the creation of the window first, and then we'll then we'll flesh this bad boy out here. So we'll set up our H instance in here, we'll load cursor, IDC arrow. I don't know if that's necessary, but we'll do that anyways. I don't know if this one is necessary either, but we'll set the background to be white. And this one definitely is necessary. We got to tell it what the name of that class is because that's what we're going to use to reference it when we create the damn window. So now we got the structure set up, the descriptor. And we call register class. And we're going to register that bad boy. And now it is available within the process for creating windows. So the hwind client, no, nope, the hwind browser, I named it client in my little test thing that I'm cribbing off of right now create window exa and we don't want any ex styles so that's zero but we do need our window class name what's the name of our window we'll call it nanocef window style is it's an overlapped window that's like a that's like your good old kind of top level window deal that clips its children because we're going to have a child for sure um what's next what's the next one x I don't really care where to put this, but let's, let's, let's just put that 220, the size of the window, 1360 by 1020. And then we got, what's the next thing? There's no parent. It is the top level window. We don't have a handle to a mem menu. We're not going to use a Windows menu if we have a menu at all. Each instance is obviously what we got, and we're not we don't need to use any kind of special parameter to pass to the create function. We're just going to use global variables. We're going to muck it up with globals. Sweet. We create our window. We're not even going to check to see whether it succeeded or not. Of course it succeeded. This is a small program. We're not going to do any error checking. It's to simulate when you guys do this, because I know you're never going to do any error checking, even in a production program. That's a, that's some shade, but. It's kind of true. I mean, I see you guys in the Discord. Browser. Yeah. So show window. Show default. So this screwed me up when I was doing the test. Because I was like, I don't remember what the macro is for the, the options. But I'll figure, I'll just put a zero in here. And uh, because that'll be like the most common option, which is to show it. No, zero means hide the window. And that screwed me up for quite a while. Because I was thinking I screwed up my Ceph stuff. And I just I gave show window the wrong. Anyways. Anyways, you don't need to know about that. H wind browser. All right, we update the window. So now we got our window. And um, after that, what do you do? What do you do when you have a window? We get some MSG. While get message. We got to process messages 
for our window because it's going to get messages. It's a very popular window. And so we process those messages. This is our loop. We live here until the end of the program. This is our this is our life now in this thread. That's all this thread is going to do. Pump this message. Q? Yeah, that's a Q. There we go. We could do some cleanup. Maybe I'll do it later, but it doesn't matter right now. Well, let me put one in here. Not going to matter for reasons you'll understand later, but we'll put it in anyways. So that is, that's it. That's all we need. But uh, we didn't really do much for the where is it. The, uh, the browser window window procedure. So this one's got to do some stuff. It's got to do one thing in particular, which is when the window is actually created, we need to attach the client to the window because that's the client is the thing that Ceph is going to use to put the content into the window. Honestly, I don't even think you need to do it in here. Like you could just probably do it after here, like after you create the window and you get the H wind, you could, but I mean, this is the way I always seen it done. So I'm like, I'm just going to do the, the idiomatic approach. It's always good to be idiomatic, which is not the same as being idiotic. Usually not the same. There might be some exceptions. Nano Ceph client inherits from public Ceph client. All right. And your, your favorite, your classic implement ref counting. Uh, and I think that's all we need here. You're not angry with me for some reason, are you? You might be angry with me. I don't know. Ah, I understand. Copy pasta. Always gets you. Okay, so now we have our client. We're going to create that. Ah, let's make a little global variable because we enjoy global variables here. Ceph ref pointer. So our P client is going to need to be created now what we got to do after we create that bad boy is we got to tell him where who's your daddy and what does he do how big is your daddy it's very important very important piece of information there so create a little a little recty boy and we get the client rectangle of this window that we created here that's our window that's the top level window that's the host of all the stuff then we create a Ceph rect, which is different than a Windows rect. Special. It's a special, special snowflake. It needs to be different. It doesn't define, you know, top, bottom, left, right. It wants X, Y, width, height. So we got to convert from the Windows rect into the Ceph rect. Because then we can do Ceph window info. And we can, on that info, we can call set as child. We're going to, we're going to, the, the window that the client is going to create, it's going to be a child of our window. So we say, hey, you're a child of this window. This Ceph rect is what you can use. Because you could use a sub, a sub region. Sub region's a good word. Probably one of the best words in this situation. And then finally, Ceph browser host, we create the browser. Beautiful. We pass it the info. We pass it the P client. We pass it the URL. Yeah, the URL to get started. Beautiful. Let me let me just do some using namespace did literals. So we're gonna go to https double forward slash uh, youtube.com. We'll make that a string. Nice. And then stuff. Settings. Now. Nah. We'll just do default settings, extra info, no, request context, nothing. And there you go. We create the browser. It's going to start off at youtube.com. It's going to be hooked up to our window that we created down here. And that's, uh, that's, that's all you need. That's all you need to get the world's shittiest web browser that you built yourself. If you don't count the fact that, you know, the library was built for you. Switch statement contains no case or default labels. Okay, that's a problem. The little little oversight on my part. We we'll do wm create, and for everything else, there's Mastercard. There we go. All right, should be more more happy now. False. 
understandable. Have a nice day. Day beautiful, amazing, fantastic. All right, now in theory we should be able to run this, except we're not going to be able to run this. And let me tell you why. Let me show you why. Run it. Hmm. Yeah. We need the DLLs. We need all the stuff in here. We need lots of stuff. So. Let's copy the stuff. That'll be the last thing we do in this video before we, we run our little testy. So we need this stuff, except for the stuff that's used for linking. So the stuff, the libs are for linking. Everything else is for runtime. So we copy. Now we also need all these resources in here. Well, we don't need all of them, but I mean, I'll just copy all of them. It's better safe than sorry, right? And then if I run it, we got YouTube.com. We are officially surfing the interweb. We can look for chili, tomato, noodle, C++. And, yeah, we can watch a YouTube video in our own custom browser. Well, kind of. It's the world's shittiest browser. Every time you want to like enter a new URL, you have to edit the source code and then rebuild it. So that, that's, the, that's a downside of the, uh, the NanoSeph browser, but it's kind, of, it's kind of cool, right? I don't know. Now, there's a there's a few problems with it. One of the problems is it doesn't the resizing. The, uh, we we need to work on this. I think I think that's probably step one or step two. The other step that we have to work on is when we close it, and then we look in the task manager. It does leave like oh like you know fewer than ten zombie processes on your system. Um, so we can, but we'll 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 fix that in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more Nano Ceph after I kill these processes. Die. Die. Which one's the root? This one's the root. There we go. See you later.